Once again and forever, welcome you to this ThinkPick Hawaii's Human Human Architecture, which is our concluding weekly rhythm of our 333, close to that, shows. And um, I have uh, me, Martin Despeng, I have UJ Fidel and DeSoto Brown with me, my dear, most favorite fellow <laughs> hosts and guests and bosses and all of that and more. And we, uh, you are where you are. Uh, the story you're always easy breezy at your Asipov Design home. You, J.R. Nuano, in your office home, home office. And I'm back to our favorite DeSoto, your birthday celebration uh, place uh, with Ethel and her breakers, which is, after all, maybe the place that is the most how we should still be in Hawaii, but it's from the mid 50s. It tells us something. You allow me to plow through, go on a rant here, and I do uh, this first slide up here. Again, why do we need architectural criticism? Why do even architects want it? So this is me, the architect, telling you that last time we concluded, how great is criticism when you get praised, right? We all love that, to be told how great we are. But what if not? Here it happened to me at the bottom right by this architect here who gave me crap some quarter of a, of a century ago. And when she came to visit us, which is one of the ways that we get people here to tell us, what they think about us, the, my school of architecture has this lecture series thing yeah. going on. So we had this architect coming and she was basically, after the after her show, I came and gave her a big cup and I thanked her for having given me crap. And I said, you know, most likely, and next slide, um, I, this is gonna help me because the work right after that, the Soto, the, the Solid Timber School for the Disabled, top left show quoted, for example, took that to my heart and was more substantial and try to be less misunderstood as their facial. So it was, it was, it was a good thing. And, you know, it was said, well, uh, the, the jury was, was pers persuaded her and the jury was uh, amongst them, David Chipperfield, who you see there, who was ever since our informal mentor and uh, criticism going both ways. Some of my colleagues having been sitting in Billy Chin's lecture said maybe there was a Freudian slip on her side because she presented the Obama library, which is unfortunately not where Obama grew up with his grandma, but where he made his career in law in Chicago. And they said, maybe that's a little too much lick and stick stone on concrete. So maybe this was a Freudian slip. Next slide. Another one of the very early supporters of this very early project here is Phyllis Richardson, originally American Californian girl that has lived in the UK. And so um, she, uh, you know, we bring in people that we know and it's always like, oh, do we bring in buddies and friends? Well, yeah, hopefully it's people we align with and we like, but not necessarily only purposely or, you know, opportunistically and selfishly, but in the case of what we believe in. So one I you know, only brought into the mainland, into the heartland, was Patrick Rand, who wrote this book at the top right that Bundit knew me through before I came. And the other one is Phyllis Richardson, who actually was with us so many years ago giving this lecture. Here's the lecture poster from 13 or something. And she you know, paid us back with this great article you see in the middle on the right there, where we drove her around and us was Don Hibbert and me hosting her. She came back to see us, and uh, her youngest son, who's now a, an adult, um, was always, you know, into our Tiki de Soto, and uh, he always said to his mom, bring me Freaky Tiki. Avery is his name. You see him at the bottom right, and we then were able to meet in person. How great is that? And thanks to Ethel and the Arnold, which is just across the corner here. So bring in people. Next one is is, you know, in the academe, which is my employer and his sort of limitations to soda we just talked about your employers limitations as putting up all the shows on their archive um is peer review they want us to show that that someone else says that we're doing okay so one of the guys i had been offered by my uh by my agent chris ford was robert mccarter who's teaching at washington university which is in in st louis uh, Missouri, and we had him come in, and he wrote all these books about these great architects. And so, one of my colleagues, you know, has uh, Ken Frampton talking about architectural critics. He's like the Pope of architectural criticism. He was this, you know, tenure review, which is great, but bringing him here is even better, which we did with Robert. Uh, next slide, and in best case, you know, we have the people come here and engage with us, which they all do in one way or another. Another guy I want to introduce to you, just like Klaus Dieter Weiss that we've talked about, this is Ulf Meyer. He only writes about what he has seen. 
So we completed this project, which is very close to, you know, um, Billy's recommendation to me, which is an off-the-grid, uh, decarbonized, whatever you want to call this, preschool in temperate climate. You see that snow drift, that brings back memories of you guys from that mainland or temperate climate there. And it was Christmas and it was closed for some weeks and we drove up there, we hardly made it. The train had a problem coming through, the cab got stuck in a snow drift and the the, the facility was closed for some weeks, so I had to get the key from facility management, and I knew Wolford right about it, no matter what, us being friends or not, because he has a very high, you know, professional integrity. That's what it's about. It's not about auntie and uncle and writing about each other because we want to just incestuously make ourselves feel good, right? So we opened the door, and luckily there were no icicles coming from the ceiling, and Ulf said, oh, this actually worked. Uh, next slide. The next time I met Ulf is when I was revisiting Berlin, his hometown. And um, he was basically saying, Martin, I can't impress you with the Emperor's New Clothes. I need to show you the, the closest to real, to substance. And these critics, they can't make a living off writing, most of them not. So Ulf is doing on the side trips for architects. And his wife is Japanese. So he takes uh, Jay, that's where you're going next. So I hooked you up with Ulf. His wife is from Tokyo. So he does tours for German architects in Tokyo and vice versa. Here's where he took the Japanese to a project that is co-op based. And Jay, you asked for the solution, I like to say resolution or conclusion of, you know, what, how can we solve our dilemmas? That might actually be a key word. On the right side, I found Ulf was participating in a conference of critics. It was all these guys together and they had a really great discussion. I'm quoting this one thing that he quoted, this lady from Mexico said, critique is more risky than commentary. Well, go figure, right? And that gets us to the next slide of one of our heroes here that we had uh, talking Kansas. He's unfortunately back where he's from because he's one of the many that can't make a living here. And having to make a living on writing and then stepping on people's toes is tough. And I'm very proud of Timothy Schuler because he picked up on that sort of homeless village at the beginning of and Nimitz Highway, and he was first, you know, given it the benefit of doubt, as we always did the Soto, and then he did a follow-up on it, and he said, well, ambitions were great, but the, the residents being run over on the beginning of Nimitz because there's no access to it, and eating the polluted by the, by the you know, emissions of the cars, banana they grow in their front yard, maybe not such a good idea. Well, you know, maybe, you know, you know making a living being so critical is obviously not rewarded here on this island. Uh, we come to things. So next slide, our dear, uh, you know, um, um, guest and co-host of many times, Richard Lowe is currently back in the villas in his rehab, and he is uh, reading the Star Advertiser. And, um, you know, what you sent me, the Soto, is the one at the bottom left when I had been going back over spring break to, to, to Europe. And it just shocked me that they're going to drain the pool of the capital and going to make some artistry in there and to Google the artist. And that's the one in the middle there. And I'm not sure what's going to come of that. And it just got me going and talking to Richard. You know, we have another tragic example that is just across the street where your first studio was uh, TV studio, Jay. And this is the, uh, the, uh, the financial plaza of the Pacific that has a Lawrence Fulprin pool. We have the one, the picture at the right in the middle uh, of that column is his color fountain in, in, in Portland. That's an icon of urban you know, water infrastructure sculpture. We have a little one, they were shoving dirt in there. So who are we that we, you know, we cannot even keep up the main building that represents us. That's by the way, is praised by people coming here. You see the show quotes here. There was Will Bruder who designed the Phoenix public library and is the main grandfather of modern architecture in Tucson. And he says, you know, this is the best capital I've ever seen of all the, you know, states in the United States. And we treat it like crap, as you quote, in, quote unquote, Jay last time. Next slide. My personal angle is this project here, which is for the second largest economy on our island, the military. It's a military cafeteria in Germany. We had ironically the same thing that we uh, had proposed a reflecting pool in front of it and it got value engineered that term you used Jay last time that dirty term American term but at least they had the guts to feel bad and they also had the guts to then have an architectural competition for an artist to do artwork instead 
We have not heard of any of that. Speaking commentary, yes. They were just reporting that's going to be it, but no one cares, right? No criticism of it. Next slide. Was that always the case? No. Back in the days, this is 1986, in an architect in an, uh, a magazine called Hawaii Architect, where actually architects were critiquing each other in a critical but collegial way. He is a great Alfred Price who basically wrote about Takashi Anbi's uh, parking structure as part of the civic center that you got yourself, thanks to Rich, heavily into uh, the Soto uh, last time. So where are these uh, good old days? And next slide, here they are. There's this picture, show quote from a very early show about Pete Wimberley, who you see is the Hawaiian shirt guy, the easy breezy guy. And you got Asipov in front of him, your architect of your childhood home, DeSoto, and then you got Alfred Price to the left. And we were digging out more people. So when, when Rich was shoved out of his home by his daughter, unfortunately, but fortunately, Rich, they're um, abundant taking care of it. A bunch of books were about to be thrown out that grosses you out, the Soto, and Bundet took care of them. And he found these treasures. 1959, you brought up the AIA, the, the, the Association of uh, you know, Architects, uh, this, uh, Jay, where are they? Well, in 56, he was the president, Mr. Seckel, and he also wrote books. This is a book, and he very humbly, he didn't put himself in the spotlight and say, it's all about me, myself, and I. He actually selects all the best of practices, and he just sneaks in humbly his own house that we call leading by example, by the way, right? So next slide is another book he wrote. And man, if you guys and girls have the chance to watch the show, stop on this slide and read through it. Hopefully the resolution is right. This sounds like a manifesto for today. So, and again, leading by example, that is his house at the bottom there. So he was just talking the talk, right? He was walking the walk. And next slide, walking the walk. Here is Yudas Soto, show quote up right there, having interviewed Bundet and Janice about them following up on that one and having built the most up to that some years ago, which was a very, very bumpy road. And again, we won't find the time to read through this. This is the conclusion. Wow, this is so encouraging. Well, that was in 1956. How, how about now? Well, about 60 years later, you Jay said rightly so. It's us and a couple other ones who do it still. And this is Scott Wilson, who we're proud of, because he was AIA president as well. When you two, BJ, and him did the show, he had the power, sort of, because what kind of power does the AIA really have? And next slide. This is what he wanted as AIA president. He wrote me this here. Hopefully it's good enough resolution-wise to read. And he said, I'm not sure if we met, and this is me. I want this model for the AIA storefront on 4th Street Mall. And uh, he was very, very enthusiastic about it. And next slide. Uh, the next president, and ever since I have no one up there where, where he was, uh, the next one, Ben Lee, turned it down. And he said, oh, this might be too provocative. Because this wasn't just a pretty, again, uh, a, a commentary model. This is a critical model because it fosters easy breeziness using the trade winds. You can look through the building, and that's why the, the emerging generation went through this tremendous effort. Someone who picked up on it, hopefully it's readable as well, is here, Kurt Sandburn. Kurt, uh, next slide, is the utmost guy that we always needed and we want back. And Jay, you really think you gave, gave it a try and called him up and he just said, no, I'm done. I'm, I'm burned. I'm, I'm, I'm out. And so what has Kurt been doing? We remember the weekly that was actually around for two decades. It was a free magazine. Well, there is no such thing as free as you, Jay, find out the very hard way in now concluding it because of the donation and fundraising. But, um, you know, that one was somehow financed, certainly through advertisement and whatever. And here's an article that Kurt very passionately did about the great old, uh, you know, and, and forever young Mr. Easy Breezy Pete Wimberley. And next slide, yeah, then he wrote this follow-up article, which was a renovation uh, that they threw out. Uh, Pete's first project was actually the, the upgrading and the renovation of the, of the Royal Hawaiian, the Pink Palace. And it had these, you remember this, I don't. And he says, you know, Martin, uh, this is why I had to write this article because I was so pissed when this renovation threw this all out. And, and, and it's a shame. And, you know, next slide, you know, he was not discriminating. He didn't take favorism, you know, and, and all the architects who weren't doing the right thing, he slammed them left and right. He is group 70. This is in front of my door here. 
uh, beach walk, uh, which is not only sort of urbanistically a nice try, but, um, you know, hula shows on AstroTurf, right, doesn't cut it. And the picture at the bottom right I took, so from the macro being problematic to the micro, these kind of glass canopies, they don't do much. They don't protect you because they're too high up from the rain. They're just there for the glamour. And ironically, through the butt joint glass, it, you can see these little drips in there. It was hard to take a picture. It drains when it rains, but not irrigating the plants and the pot, but the lighting fixture that's going to go boom at some point. So go figure. So Kurt then uh, said it was designed by Group 70 International, one of the best connected, most doctrinaire and dullest architectural firms in the state. You ask me, Jay, who has which balls? He has the biggest balls, as you can tell. But next slide, was he, you know, negative to be negative uh, for the sake? No, he was negative because he wanted to get back the positive days. And so here in the weekly, he wrote, um, he sat down with us and the emerging generation and used one of their projects. Well, that was a month before the weekly was how. That was it. Speaking, that sounds like a situation that is um, familiar to us, unfortunately, right? Next slide. Uh, but regardless, and then who got slammed as well? Uh, so here is a Rongstead, Joe Paul Rongstead. We don't get us going on that, Jay. We can do multiple, uh, you know, uh, ad hoc follow up shows on that one. But he, while he was, again, getting right at him and having sitting down, he calls him feisty and braggadacious, which is a word, you know, that is, wow. But he was fair because he was also pointing out his stack Lanai phase, which is show quoting that we did the, the, the ziggurat buildings on. So he tried to be really balanced in the best sense of what journalism should be. Next slide. And once we got together, he recently said, well, we didn't you know, do enough together, but oh well, but we did this together. And again, it stirred, read, more importantly, is down there, the reader's comment. It started to have engage a great critical discourse, which is exactly why you started uh, this program here, Jay. And this here, the next slide, is uh, me having stopped by and celebrated Thanksgiving with Kurt back where he basically has been for quite a while. Uh, which is uh, which is San Francisco, and um, you know he then went on to write for Civil Beat. Already the previous one where we're Civil Beat, and we have our very very mixed feelings Jay, about Civil Beat. Um, but at least Kurt, you know they 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 allowed Kurt or Kurt was sneaking in, only to then again these were the last two articles he was ever writing. Ugly Honolulu and when protection fails in Ugly Honolulu. That was about the Ritz Carlton, where he was digging out dirt and corruption and all this stuff, you know. And I'm pretty sure someone called, you know, Omiyar, the founder of Civil Beat, and say, hey, how about we take this guy down? And what really hurt him is that they said the reason, well, you're not permanently on the island, so you're not really qualifying. Well, that actually the opposite is often the case, right? For me, at least, DeSoto, you know, when I go back, you know, and I come back, then I'm the most, you know, kind of aware of things. Next slide, but Kurt, you know, to do, even on top of everything else, he's been writing all these because he's a homegrown boy and he's a son of a developer and he went up against a dad. Over Thanksgiving, he told me his dad sued him twice. Go figure, right? So he's all fully into what he wanted to be called because, oh, if you go back, Michael, uh, previous slide, one of the very first shows, number seven or eight, of the 333 was with Kurt and he want, we argued a lot as Jay and you and I did about how do we call the show when we actually settled on human humane architecture. I argued with him for days, weeks, and we settled on activist journalism because he said, you know, I only write about things I'm passionate about. Either, you know, because I hate them and I need to prevent things. And he prevented developments as for example, there at, um, at um, Sandy Beach where you know, um, um, uh, Henry J. Carza wanted to go over the the, the berm, you know, and, and show off, have, you know, Hawaii Kai spill over. And he started this initiative and they basically took it down, which got him in trouble with his father, who was a developer. Anyway, so um, all that being said, you know, Kurt, thank you, thank you, thank you. And also next next page, thank you for your more sort of lightweight. And 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 this is this is your, your tribute, your homage to your way you grew up because this shows how much you love Hawaii, because you wrote all these books about all these islands. So then Kurt keeps 
being on it, whenever we meet him, you know, he points us out what the discussions is amongst the circles. So he defers us to Fred Bernstein, who um, writes about architecture on a on a high level, and 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 Fred gets on his colleagues and says, you know, don't get fooled by even Harvard, and he criticizes one of their programs where they talk about, oh, we make this net zero building that uses no fossil fuel, you know, whatsoever. And he says, well, in operation, how about the erection of it? How about the construction of it? So he's really an advocate for life cycle assessment, which is, by the way, you know, Jay, you're going to Japan and do sushi, and I'm going to do what I am already did anyway, is a little bit more intense now, which is the all-American words of um, EBD, evidence-based design, um, LCA, life cycle assessment, um, a POE, post-occupancy evaluation. So it's not the pretty picture when the building is done, but the building shows over its lifetime. You know, Jay, you addressed that last time. Buildings have to be taken down or not. So there is it. Um, what also has he been doing? All of these are doing kind of obituaries when the great masters and players in the field pass. And so he did one about the great Fry Otto that we talked about a lot to Soto. And uh, next slide is... Uh, who we brought in. This is someone related to Fry Otto and to Banish. Matt Noblet gave a lecture and we dragged him in. We pulled him more than one should because we made him a co-host for 20 something shows. And before we even got to his great projects, we had to go on a weekly basis about assessing the new stuff going up, as you see at the bottom. And he always, you know, and he has to be watched out, as you said, right? Because he's there and needs to get jobs. So maybe you can't, you know, bitch as much as you want to, but he did he did really, really well. And most recently, his buddy, next slide, Thomas Au, we had here that you know him now, DeSoto, he's a new friend of yours too. And we were out there and I drove him by, you know, and he does, he is engineering, not value, but truly engineering the best off the grid buildings. And we said, I provoked him saying, hey, this is actually could, is ready to move in. But this is the new Howard Hughes affordable. Now they're all dress it up, you know, moo moo it, suffocate it, go figure. Next slide. You know, which is where all the, the journalists, where they work, that should impact them, right? So here you have the kind of invasive star bulletin building historic at the bottom left. But then way worse when they moved out to the second city, Francis Oda, which is the one that uh, Kurt talks about, the dullest and doctrinate and most connected. That was out there west in Kapole, a postmodern piece of cake. And that PBS thing at the beginning of, uh, um, um, you know, Nimitz isn't really any better. Next slide. Why do I say that? Where does my competence comes from? Uh, we had for the main newspaper building company here at the very bottom left is a is a is a is a is a brick expressionist icon building that they built for themselves, right? So they started out building a great building that has a place in architectural history. They did one in the 70s, you know, which has Lanai's by the way around, and then we took a chance to build one of the tram stations in front of it. So, you know, that, that's something. And going back to uh, the, the top show quote to like recommendations, uh, both uh, actually Will Bruder and Scott Wilson recommended Renzo Piano to build. And what did he do? We mentioned that last time we were wrapping up why we look like Chicago. This is the New York Times building. So they have the best biochromatic, the most sensitive of the star architects basically built that. Next slide. And Jay, you might not have known, but um, now you know that you've always been broadcasting from what we consider to be the best as potential, which is tropical brutalism that has the best potential to be biochromatic. So we have Pioneer Plaza at the bottom left. We obviously have now fine inspectors. And you should have a new studio in uh, what's the Davis uh, Pacific Center by all our, you know, all favorite Steve Owl versus it being chopped and, 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 and commercialized into the uh, Modea, what they do. Dokomomo, not to forget, DeSoto, you, you filled up the Dokomomo playlist that we have, and we had this great get-togethers and conventions. Ron Lindgren, we learned through that. But Jay, your point, you know, does anyone hear that? So this is what our, my employer does, what UH does. They seem to have this generic budget of 50 million where they just rape things, excusing to use that term, but I don't find any better one. You know, they got... Uh, Sinclair Library, which is an icon, is the is the architecture biochromatics 101. It seems to be like, oh, you know, we need architectural jobs, so we jump on it. This is criminal, if you ask me. Next slide. And that is the next one, Kuykendall Hall, which we talked about a lot, $50 million, so please not. 
So next slide, um, thanks to Don Hibbert, he was providing me from his past, and he said there was this professor of him, Meredith Neal, who uh, basically wrote good stuff, and for like this one here, which gets us to uh, Bill Chapman, who is the interim dean of the school, and soon not anymore. So here's his engagements. We had him on the show a couple of times, and you know his contributions to critical discourse on the island that I found. And Don, again, next slide is here. Don, again, has written these very important books. He is out there in a Society of Architectural Historians. And when you, play, when you look for a building, it's there online, and he writes about it. And then down there, he was giving me all these names from his memory of people who actually have been architectural critics uh, more unofficially on the island. The next slide. This is, again, uh, the guy. And talking about, you know, today, no one wants to risk anything. They're all afraid, right? And in, in, the, in the tenure and promotion, you better don't say anything until you're safe, right? Which means you get tenure and promotion. Well, bullshit in this case, this Meredith Neal, the great raw model for Don Hibbert, and maybe I have to ask Bill, maybe for him too. He was assistant professor, brand new. Did he add, add any fear? No. Next slide. And then he even was igniting a, a journalist from the Star Advertiser to write about him and to you know, talk about his book review. Next slide. Uh, and, and, and so on. And over the years, as you can tell, we're in the 70s. But going back to the next slide, uh, which is the 60s, where, Jay, you just told me you were dating and your wife were dating up there in the mountains. Well, this is what a very popular, to say the least, uh, magazine looked at it in, uh, in 1969, in a very critical way, and that's the Look magazine, and they called it uh, Paradise and Pearl Go Figure. So where does it leave us having to come to the end here, next slide, which is us, Yuda Soto, and me having approached like the Look magazine is from Des Moines, Iowa. This guy in the middle, Philip Moiser, is from Germany, and he writes these architectural guides, and he charged us to do one. And we only gonna we told him right away we only gonna talk about buildings that we think are up to pace, you know, with our ethical standards. Um, and he says, "Go for it." So um, one, Jay once said, "Well, good for you." We also give it back and say, "Good for all of us," because this book there is 300 city guides for cities all over the world. This one is unique because you see this QR code at the very bottom right. That's gonna link the shows that are relative to the buildings we pick, and thanks to your legacy keeping it alive, uh, they will be, you know, active. Uh, they continue to be active. Next slide is uh, me thanking uh, my dear business partner and dad, Gunter, who also reports. Dresden also has not a journalist on staff in the newspaper, but they they charge, they hire people from other, like Falk Jäger, who's a, really a national, international guy, and they bring them in as guest critiques. And I want to thank my uh, our um, uh, monograph author, uh, Chris van Offelen, who, who took us on to reflect about where we're going. Next slide is, um, Jay, me, your, um, your um, what do you call me again? Uh, Louis um, um, Carroll, right? So here's me, the lizard out of the, out of the chimney. And this is us in the alchemist chamber with the emerging students. And I want to thank my dear wife and sweetheart, Suzanne, top there, top left, who has been our exotic escapism expert for all the time. And she's been patient with me in plugging along. She calls plucking along because I spend too much time on Photoshop and spend not enough time with her. So maybe she gets a little bit more time now. I want to thank our new promising, um, you know, um, Beacon Martin Ansolini de Soto, who is uh, also reporting from Bogota, his hometown, where there's an architect reporting about architecture very critically. And last but not at all least, next slide, I want to thank you, DeSoto. Besides everything you have been doing, you are doing in your multiple jobs. Next slide, please, Michael. This one, of course. All your doings in and outside of the museum, all the books you wrote, but your dedication to, uh, which is subsumized in my favorite of your shows, the evolution of islands, traditions of innovations, and being like your, you know, your, your king back, then you're crazy about new stuff from all over the world. So you always take the, the virtual, you know, uh, 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 the world tour with us through Think Tech Hawaii. And then next and final slide, Jay, thank you for everything, you know, even having allowed us to do. And you will be always and forever. And thank you said, you know, I'm not dead. I take you up on that one. And you will always be the Abhinathan 
of uh, of us here in Hawaii. But the good thing is, since his he was operating from a ship with radio to begin with, and then when his funding dropped, he thought he needed to tank um, the the ship. Uh, but the, so you know, this is not this is think tech and not think tank. So it won't tank. Thank you for everything, for your encouragement, and especially the emerging generation that we have up there. That was back in uh, Pioneer Plaza where students came up and saw, sat behind, sat on stage, and, and you gave them a stage because we concluded every show with a, um, with a positive, uh, progressive proclamation and proposition. So lucky, uh, this is not the last show because on that, as you asked us, where is this all going, Jay? See us back in about two hours at noon today. We will um, conclude with that. So I gave you no time to respond. Hopefully you asked for an ad hoc commentary show for this. <laughs> DeSoto, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, that was very <laughs> enjoyable. I agree. And it was it was informative. and. Um, a very good wrap up of the entire situation that we've been talking about. Amen. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you for this. Thank you for 333 shows. Thank you for participating in our civic engagement and the public conversation in Hawaii, professionally and publicly. Thank you too. And most importantly, thank you audience, you 18,200 people who watched us and will continue to watch us. Thank you your legacy collection jay thank you ladies and gentlemen first and foremost and keep up you know the critical discourse and the critical thinking which is crucial and i'm going to say goodbye too and sorry it's ending but it was it was a lot of fun and uh, i think we did a lot of good stuff i totally agree We'll treasure it. We'll treasure the collection, and we'll try to reduplicate the, the whole spirit of it going forward. All right, guys. We went over time, but it's hopefully a reason. And thank you, Ethel, behind me, who is, you know, breathing through the jealousies, easy breezy. So I'll come to the, to the, to the breakers, spend some nights here, and then uh, get the shows on your, on your screen and watch them. <laughs> My dog is now visible because she's been present for all of these too. So yeah. she's saying goodbye as well. Jay, you always liked her as a great cheerleader, of as an example of the natural environment. And you got your easy breezy jealousies behind you. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of fun for sure. Thanks to Jay. Thanks again. I only go around once, Martin and DeSoto. It's been great to have you on our lineup, and I want more. Thank you so much. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Bye. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.